What's up guys, welcome to the CLI Essentials Today with .NET. Today we're going to cover the commands that I actually use on the job every day when creating, building and testing projects. And instead of getting lost in documentation, we're going to have a quick run through of the important commands and afterwards I'm going to show you a quick demo where you see how we're going to create a solution, add some projects, add some NuGet packages, remove some projects, all the good stuff. And after watching this video, you hopefully never want to click a play button again. Let's jump in. So as you see right here, as always, I have an article for you and I have the first little prerequisite section right here that says basic understanding of c -sharp and how to create and manage solutions and projects in your IDE. What I assume is that you coming from your IDE and now you want to transition to near them and that is why you watch this video. So I assume a foundation of c -sharp and .NET before we can proceed right here, okay? So let's go through the run through section. The first one is easy, .NET new, it lets you create .NET artifacts like solutions, consoles and unit tests and much more. If you want to have the full list, click on the link to the documentation. I move on. Once we created our solution and the projects with .NET new, we can add the projects to the solution with the .NET solution add and remove command. We're going to see that later in the demo. I move on. That's an easy one. I like to use .NET build along with grep to look for errors in case I have some, so it's not too spammy when I do a .NET build. Next thing, .NET restore, restores dependencies specified in a CS project file. Again, we're gonna see that in a second. Next thing is the .NET user secrets. Yeah, and since I already did in-depth videos of user secrets and .NET format, I recommend you just check them out on the channel. Demo time. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a folder. Make dear Rambo solution. Then we're going to cd into that folder. Then we're going to create a solution with .NET new solution. Then we go Rambo solution. We have a little n flag for the name. Right now in that folder, we have a file that is called Rambo solution solution. We're going to open that file. And you see it's quite boring. It's nothing nothing more inside than those couple lines here. This will change as we add more projects. So I move on and I go and I create a directory source and a CD into source. And now we're going to use .NET new again to create some console that goes by the name Rambolution, Rambo Soul. Boom. Next we're going to add is a unit test, new n unit that goes by the name not test m one but Rambo Lucian tests. And now we have two projects in that directory right here. And when I move up, then I see, okay, when I use tree level two, boom, they see this is my current product structure. But still, nothing changed in the solution really. And this is what we're going to change with .NET solution add and then we have the file path source rambo solution first we add the console boom so when i open the solution file now again and i look inside then i see we added some projects once for the source folder right here i'll do it like this like here right and we added the console and when i look at the id of the console then i see that we have now multiple settings for this console project baked into our solution and this all came with .NET solution add, right? And the next thing we're going to add is not the, the, the console, but the unit test project, right? Again, I open the solution file and then I see tests. Yeah, there we go. Here, it added the test project. Now, if I go back, remove this one. And now remember, right? We're still in the project root. Right here, this is the solution route where we are right now. And that being said, if I do .NET build, grab error, doesn't really mean anything. Boom, zero errors, of course. It goes through everything we have added to our solution. That means if I now go, I open Vim, and I go into so the program, program CS of the console, and I have an error right here, and I go back. And then I try to build again. I will have an error because this one is added to my solution, right? But I can still do a .NET solution remove and then source uh, console, right? Remove that. And if I do now .NET build, then you see it's building happily.
And of course, now one could CD into the boom, boom, boom tests directory and run .NET test because we have a test project, right? So see everything happy. Next thing I'm going to check out is NuGet packages and the .NET restore command. .NET restore restores dependencies specified in a CS project file. We're going to see that in a second. But first, the NuGet config. When installing .NET, we get a default NuGet config in the user path that points to the public open NuGet feed, API NuGet.org. And it looks like this. And you see, this is the, the default user path right here, .NET NuGet dot nougat slash nougat right and this is how it looks there's no credentials specified right here because open and public and everyone can access it right and this is per default put into this path when i move down then you see that you can also provide project specific nougat config files and this is the search order right here right when you do a dot net restore dot net looks for the nougat config first in the cs proj root and if there's no file there, it goes to the solution root. And if there's no file there, it goes to the user path, this one right here. And if there's no NuGet file in the user path, then it looks in the machine path. But usually, again, you have a default config in this path. So this is the default right here. It shouldn't be necessary to look in the machine path. It should be very rare. Anyways, you can find a list of the OS specific paths because you know Linux is different for Windows, it's different to Mac, whatever. So when you click the link, you see that's down in the left corner, there's Microsoft.com, whatever, it's a real Microsoft documentation link right here, okay? And if you specifically set file path in the .NET restore command, like so, with dash dash config file, path to the file, then everything you set before is overridden. Even if you have NuGet config files in one of these locations right here, all of this is ignored when you pass this flag to the dot restore command, okay? Package sources. As I said, nuget.org is the public nuget feed from Microsoft API nuget.org. No need for credentials here, right? What you also can do is you can have a private repository or private feed or private artifactory, so to speak, that you or your company host yourself. And for this one, of course, you would need credentials. And I said it right here, usually your private artifactory provider should come with instructions on how to set up your NuGet config correctly. You know, for example, JFrog, when I open this link right here, boom, boom, boom. Then you see you get instructions on how to actually set up your NuGet config for this particular provider. Like usually you have some admin in your company who's doing that thing for you. I go back. Now let's look at a quick example of what .NET Restore is doing. So a quick example for NuGet packages, I choose units net. I go to the NuGet gallery page of that package and I see I could easily edit with .NET add and then the package name whatsoever. We're not gonna do this right here. We're gonna raw dog this package reference into the CSPOT file. So first I'm gonna copy my C-sharp code that I'm gonna use for that package. Go for my program CS paste this right here. And then you see, of course, it cannot find the methods provided by this package, right? So we gonna copy this one, go back and introduce below the property group, an item group, item group, like so. Open this one right here, and then paste the package reference. And now if I do a .NET restore, I see the build for that has succeeded. And if I now go back into the program CS, I have to think, wake up. Yeah, just have to wake up the LSP a little bit. You see now I get the, the summary for this method. And that means the units net package has been successfully loaded. So now if I do a .NET build, it should build just fine. Cool. Now if, if I run this thing, can I do a .NET run? Maybe not from here. No, 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 I have to CD into the source and then the Rambo. So, and then do a .NET run and then spits out, yeah, 9.8 something something, what it says right here, perfect. So the NuGet package is working. Back to the article, and as I said, the .NET add command does both things in one go, right? Adding this line to the csproj file and do a .NET restore. I think we can move on to the bonus section. 
So when we look at the bonus section, we see two things. We see .NET test and we see .NET publish. I'm not going to read through all of that. I'm just going to say two things. When you pass the dash dash collect and so on and so forth parameter to the .NET test command, what it's going to do for you is it's going to create an XML file with information about your test results that you can then feed into analyzer tools like Zona Cube, Zona Cloud, and the like. And then those tools are going to tell you what you can improve about your code, and it's very handy, not essential. .NET Publish. You can do a lot of things with .NET Publish. What I think stands out for me is that you can also publish your current .NET project as a Docker container with this single line right here. Again, very handy, not essential. If you want more information about that, read the documentation. And if you want me to do videos about that, .NET Publish, .NET Test, or anything else, just text me in the comments. I will see what I can do. But for now, this is all about the CLI Essentials.NET episode. And I wish you all a lovely week. Papa, see you in the next one.